Welcome to another Monday Music Minute. I'm your host, Eric Gill, Communications Director for St. Lucie County. I'm Mark Fried at the St. Lucie County Library System. And each week we tell you our favorite finds on Freegal, brought to you by the St. Lucie County Library System, which allows you to download and stream music to your phone or your computer thanks to the uh, Freegal app and your library card. And this week we have a special guest, but to keep with social distancing, we're going to do a special magic and disappear and bring back our guest, Kara with the HR Department. <laughs> Adapted from the Victor Hugo novel, Les Miserables was originally conceived as a simple recording production. This grew into one of the premier theater events of the 1980s. In fact, it has been going almost nonstop since it first opened, but being forced to close in March 2020 because of COVID-19. Les Miserables is considered one of the greatest musicals of modern era, and the original London cast recording is considered by many to be superior to various other releases, including the Broadway cast. The story is set in early 19th century France and chronicles the life of Jean Valjean, a simple Frenchman who was arrested as a youth for stealing a loaf of bread. After serving 19 years, he is set free. Upon changing his name and eluding authorities, Valjean becomes the surrogate father of a young girl and a mayor as the French Revolution sets in. As the war rages on, he finds that he cannot change the man he is. Les Miserables is full of extravagant effects and large full cast numbers. The beautiful score is full of emotion and humor, including such memorable and noteworthy songs as One Day More. The culminating number of the show is by far one of the best musical theater songs to date. This song single-handedly captures a full range of emotions, hope, love, excitement, anger, sadness, and a little bit of deviousness. All of the main characters join together on stage just before the big battle that is set to occur the very next day. Thanks, Kara. Mark, what do you got this week? Hailing from Australia, Orianthi is a guitarist, singer, and songwriter who has released four solo records to date, as well as one in a group with Richie Sambora of Bon Jovi fame. She independently released her debut studio album in 2005, composing, recording, and mixing it in her home studio. This caught the ear of none other than Carlos Santana, who shared the recording, which eventually led to a record deal for her. She has a quite the musical resume. Highlights include playing with or opening for Carrie Underwood, Michael Jackson, Alice Cooper, Steve Vai, John Mayer, Mika, Kid Rock, Adam Lambert, and Daughtery. Friegel has her new release simply titled O. Oh. It's an interesting influence of her metal, hard rock, and blues with a nice little polish coating of pop to appeal more to the masses. O oh is a well-rounded record that shows she is more than just a great guitarist. It's a much-needed departure from the over-manufactured auto-tune fluff that has saturated the market for the past several years. Is this slanderous? Nah, I have teenagers. I listen to that auto-tune fluff. This week, I'm going with the folksy singer-songwriter Ray LaMontagne. A few months back, he released his eighth studio album, Monovision, which is an excellent album to start with if you've never listened to him before. The first few songs go from acoustic blues to Otis Redding-style love songs to the Bayou Bouncer, Strong Enough, which sounds like a CCR cover. But if you've never heard of La Montaigne, I recommend starting with his self-produced 2010 album, God Willing and the Creek Don't Rise. The album swerves from bluesy folk numbers like Repo Man to the soulful sadness of like rock and roll on the radio and New York City's Killing Me. Frigo also has some excellent live EPs of Rays with a Pariah Dog, so check them out. That does it for this week's Monday Music. See you next Monday.